welcome back to Anderson Acres. We're out here today on the lawn with Little Vodka. He's only 10 weeks old and he's just started a little bit of training. So we're going to talk about training some cues that are rather important for a livestock guardian. Today we're going to cover the first part of teaching look here. Look here is an, an important skill because if they're out in the field and I need them to look at me, I need them to look here and then I'll tell them what to do next. There are a lot of distractions in a farmyard. There can be cows, horses, sheep, goats, chickens, neighborhood dogs, cars, tractors. There's all kinds of stuff that's distracting for these poor guys. So what we need to do is be able to get their attention. And Gwen, you're not helping. So we need to get their attention. And in order to get their attention, they need to know what we want. Okay? So in this case, what we want is him to look at me. And look here means look at my face. Okay, wait for the next instruction. So teaching that is actually three stages and we're only gonna do the first stage today. And I'm gonna kinda show you a little bit with each dog because he's very young. He's never done this before. Okay, so what you do, you need some treats. You like treats, don't you? So you don't wanna leave them in like a crumply bag. You wanna either put them in a treat pouch or maybe in your pocket. So grab a handful. Now these are a real high value treat for him. These are beef liver. So I'm putting them in my pocket because <laughs> he can't have them. <laughs> so what we're going to do is teach him to look at my face when I say look here, but we're not going to use the verbal cue today. Today I just want him to get used to looking at me and being rewarded for doing so. And then in the next video we'll start, we will eventually start adding the verbal cue. Today he's just going to learn to look at me. So he does, it doesn't matter if he's sitting or standing, it doesn't matter. So you show him the treat and get his attention. Yes, the moment he looks at your face. So you put that treat right in front of your nose because that's where you want him to look. Okay, As, and you don't overfeed the treats. You wait till he's done eating that one before you give him another one. Okay, and he loves treats. They tend to be very food motivated. It doesn't matter whether he's sitting, standing, doesn't matter. So... Wait till he's done eating. Get his attention. Yes. And you have to use some kind of reward sound. So in our case, we use yes. Yes means you're doing such a good job. Okay, that's what yes means. And we're on the floor with him because he's so little. Okay, he's a tiny, tiny, tiny guy. So we have to sit on the ground because even sitting on a chair, we're actually a little bit too high. So we do it again. Yes. And what we're doing is we're getting them to look at our face. That's what we want. Meet me in the eyes. You want to look in my eyes and then I'll tell you what to do next. But right now we're just doing this. So you want to keep repeating this. Uh, could be a day, could be a week. It depends on your dog, but you want to do this a lot. Yes. And we're not adding the verbal cue yet. He's not ready for the verbal cue. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go get tequila and we have to change locations because tequila is so much bigger. Like she's literally taller than me now when I'm sitting down. So I need a different height for her. So if you're starting out with an older dog, like tequila already knows what I want her to do, but we can still do it. It doesn't matter. But <laughs> so if you're starting out with an older dog, you're going to need to approach it a little bit differently just because of the height problem. Livestock guardian breeds are all pretty big. So he's little. I'm on the ground with him. But for a dog tequila's size, good boy. Yes, good boy. He's a good dog. So for a dog tequila's size, we're going to have to approach it a little bit differently. Always have a lead on your dog during a training session. Okay, just so they know that this is serious. This is serious business. Even if they don't know how to walk on a lead yet, he's not particularly good at walking on a lead right now. But with a lead on, they know, let's take this seriously. So we are going to stop the video. I will go get tequila. We will move to a different spot because this is far too low. And then we will show you what to do when your dog is a little bit bigger. All right, so here we are with tequila. She's a larger dog. We still have a lead on because it's a training session and she needs to be paying attention. We also have our treats again, pocket full of treats. Right, tequila? Good girl. So she actually will know exactly what I'm asking for. But still, same method applies. Now, we're standing up because she's a taller dog. If I was sitting on the ground, she'd dwarf me. 
So dog this size, you stand up, you let her smell the treat, and you go, yes. She, she knows what I'm asking. And again, you will repeat this anywhere from a day to a week before you move on to step two. So show the treat. Yes. And they get a treat for looking at me. That's all we're doing. The first step is just a treat for looking. So again, smell the treat. Yes. And they get the treat. So pick a word you're always going to use. So we use yes because that means that's exactly what I wanted you to do. Good job. You don't want a long and complicated anything. So again, yes. Perfect. So if you have a medium-sized dog, that's when we're going to flip over to Whiskey. Now, let's be fair. Whiskey's almost eight. He knows all these tricks. But we're still going to do it with Whiskey just to show you, uh, again, different positioning based on the size of your dog. So he's more medium side, size. Okay, a squirrel threw an acorn at me. Not cool. Anyway, don't worry about that. <laughs> so we're going to get Whiskey, and I'm changing positions again. So you can see exactly what I mean when I say different sizes mean different accommodations must be made. Because if we sat on the ground with her, we'd get trampled. So we'll, get, go, we'll go get whiskey, we'll come back, and we will try this all again. Alright, so here we are with whiskey. Big boy, he's going to be 8 years old, he's actually only a medium sized dog. But it's the same approach. Now to be absolutely fair, whiskey already knows what I'm going to ask him. Right whiskey? Come. So what, he, what we're going to do is same thing. If you have a medium-sized dog, you're going to want to seat yourself in a chair. Okay, pull his shirt up. He doesn't like being naked. There we go. So you're going to want to sit yourself in a chair because it kind of gives you the right height because he's a medium-sized dog. Okay, because you do want him to be able to meet your eyes. If you stand up with a tiny puppy, you're actually too high for them and it becomes more difficult to get them to meet your eyes. So again, smell. Yes. And again, treats in your pocket, not in something that makes a lot of noise. Good boy. Whiskey. Yes. So again, same deal. Right? One, two, three. Yes. So we've played this game for years. He knows what this is. But that's okay. Just because he already knows, I mean, the little guy didn't know. Right? The little guy did not know. You're a good boy. So what you do is you alter your approach based on the size of your dog. So he's this big, I'm sitting in a chair. Tequila was this big, nearly eye level with me, and you do want them to have to look up. You just don't want to be towering over them so they have to look really far up. So base your height on the size of the dog. So for a medium sized dog, this is where you'd sit. So if your puppy is like four months old, you might want to sit in a chair. If your livestock guardian's a little older, you're probably going to want to stand. And if there's still a little puppy still learning the ropes, then you're going to want to sit on the floor. Gets you closer to them and allows them to make eye contact with you all the easier. So that is just step one. We are not going to cover step two today because you want to practice step one with look here for a very long time. Okay? Depending on your dog. Some dogs pick it up in just a few minutes and that's fine. Then you can move on to step two. But some dogs need like a week or more of repetitive, you know? Yes. You just oh, look over my shoulder. I don't need to turn around. Good boy. So you do want to give them time to master the look in my eyes, then I'll give you the snack. Okay? So next week we'll come back and we will move on to step two. But for right now, step one is just get them to meet your eyes and we get a snack. Okay? You look in my eyes, you get a snack. So you want to take it slow and steady with a livestock guardian. He's not a livestock guardian, but he's a medium-sized dog, so I thought I'd use him. <laughs> so you do want them to be able to look in your eyes, and you do want to take it slow and steady. Remember, livestock guardians can be stubborn. They are highly trainable, but they're also kind of going to want to do what they want to do sometimes, and that's just the way it is. So that's about it for us here today at Anderson Acres. Join us next week, and we will cover part two of look here so that we can slowly teach our dogs how to look at us when we need them to. We'll see you tomorrow.